All right, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, I thank you for this blessed day that you've given us. And I pray that you set a watch before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. And I thank you when I open my mouth wide, you will fill it. And Lord, let this word go forth and encourage people and warn them and build them up in you and let it make a difference in their lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In this day and age, we are facing a lot of trials and a lot of difficulties and all kinds of complications. And it's easy to get overwhelmed and start thinking, forget this. You know what? I can't go on. I just give up. And it doesn't matter anyway. I can't make a difference and I can't overcome this. But that you can't overcome is a lie of the enemy. It is a lie of Satan because the truth is, you can overcome and overcome means succeed in dealing with a problem or difficulty, defeat an opponent to prevail. So yes, you can succeed and you can prevail. You can conquer the enemy, but you're not going to do it through your own strength. You're not going to do it through your own abilities. You're not going to do it through some self-help book or through some wisdom the world spouts out every single day. You can try and try and you might get a, a tiny measure of success, but in long term, you'll fail that way because the Bible says that without me, you can do nothing. And so we need to go to Jesus Christ. He's the one who will help us overcome. And he is the one who overcame sin, death, and the grave. And the Bible says that ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. First John 4, 4. If we read that again, we say, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Jesus Christ lives inside of us and he is greater, greater than anything we will face, greater than any shortcoming, trial, greater than any difficulty or family member, anything that we are up against. He is greater than them. He is greater than Satan and all of his devices and all of the men and women that he works through. He is greater than a crumbling government. He is greater than the socioeconomic downturns. He is greater than all of it. And if we have repented of our sins and placed our faith in Jesus Christ, then he lives inside us. So I remember going through struggles, which we all do. The Bible guarantees that we will. And I felt like I couldn't overcome those, overcome my own shortcomings, overcome my own addictions to things that maybe the world wouldn't consider harmful, but I knew they were pulling my love and devotion away from God. And I wanted my focus to be 100% on him, but I felt like I couldn't get over those things. And and this is the verse that God kept on quickening to my heart. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Satan wants us to believe that we can't overcome him, that we can't overcome the darkness, and he wants us to believe that we are alone in the fight. We are alone on the battlefield. He wants to isolate us from friends, from families, from our church. And then he wants to pick us off like a wolf picks off a sheep from a flock or a vulture does a dead carcass. But you and I, we are not alone. Let me say that again. Don't listen to Satan whispering to you and saying you are all alone and no one cares for you. That is a lie. You are not alone. And God cares for you. It says casting all your cares upon him for he careth for you. Paul says, what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God gave us his beloved son. If you have a child, could you imagine giving that child over for the sacrifice of people who would hit him, mock at him and nail him to a cross and hate his guts? But that's what Jesus did for you and me because he loves us so much. And since he gave Jesus Christ to us, no good thing will he withhold from us. Victory, overcoming, conquering the battles, giving us grace and strength and victory and provision. The Bible says, who who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh
maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? You could say, will it be the government? Will it be the sh- your own shortcomings? Will it be bills? Will it be your family members? Will anything separate you from the love of God as it is written in the old in the New Testament they were saying for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter in other words we are victims but nay you're not in all these things we are more more than conquerors through him who loved us for For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, no matter how bad they may seem, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is for us. He is with us. Jesus Christ lives inside of us and he wants us to overcome. And through his grace and strength, he will freely give us that which we need in order to gain the victory. Psalm 84 11 says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No good thing will God withhold from us. And we know that victory over Satan and joy and peace and hope and endurance are all good things. And he will give them to us as we walk uprightly. And he will even give us the grace and strength to walk uprightly. And he promises that in Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. We need to see God has not abandoned us. He has not forsaken us. He has not led us as sheep to the slaughter and forgotten us. We are not victims, victims of our skin color, victims of our gender, victims of what the world says about us, victim of our incomes, victim of the family that we are born into. We are not victims. The Bible is clear on this, that we are more than overcomers. Satan would have you look at, oh, I'm a victim because my ancestors used to be slaves. But no, you're not a victim. You are the child of Jesus. You are the child of God Most High. You are royalty in his eyes. He sacrificed his son for you. You are not a victim. You are an overcomer through Jesus Christ who gave himself for you. So get yourself out of that. Go to God and say, Lord, what do you say about me? What do you say I can become through you? What do you say about my situation? I'm not going to listen to the world anymore and their news reports and how they're trying to turn us against each other just because of the way we look or because of the way we believe. Lord, I believe in you and I am an overcomer through you. We are not, again, I say, helpless victims knocked to and fro in this world. Instead, the Bible says greater is he that is within us. And we need to see through God's eyes because when we see through God's eyes, we will see what Elisha saw when he was up against the large army of the Syrians. In 2 Kings 6 verses 8 to 22, the king of Syria was making war against Israel and he was talking to his servant saying, my My camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel saying, beware that you don't pass that way because the Syrians are going to be coming down there. Then the king of Israel, he sent someone to that place to check it out. And he was right. Not just once, not just twice, but more than that. And so they were able to avoid disasters because of Elisha being directed by God. Then the heart of the king of Syria, while he was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called all of his servants and he said to them, Will you not show me which of us is a betrayer, is a traitor who is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, oh, it's it's not us, Lord. It's none of us. It's Elisha. He's a, a prophet in Israel. He tells the king of Israel every word that you speak in your bedroom. So the king said, go and see where he is that I may send and get him. And it was told him that Elisha was in Dothan, Dothan. So the king of Syria, he sent horses and chariots and he sent a great army there and they came by night and they surrounded the whole city. So in the natural, there was no way for them to escape. And when the servant of the man of God, when Elisha rose early and went out, 
There was an army surrounding the whole city with horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, master, what shall we do? And sometimes we feel the same way. Oh no, what do I do? Everything's so dark, everything's so expensive. There's so many bills to be paid. There's so many things going wrong in my family and in the government. Oh, there's so many things wrong even with my health and I'm, I'm trying to hang on and believe for victory and for healing. But my situation looks impossible. It looks like I'm alone and the enemy, he's out to destroy me. He's got me surrounded. There's no way to escape. And you know what? I think he's gonna succeed. Where is God? Doesn't he hear my prayers? Doesn't he hear my cries? Is he really here with me? Will he really bring me through this? Can I really overcome these problems, these trials, these difficulties, these shortcomings, these mountains I'm up against? Alas, what shall we do? We don't know if we are going to make it. They say it looks like it's all over. The dice have been rolled, the cards are stacked against us. It's impossible. We're bound to fail and we're going to lose this war. But they don't know what I know and they don't know who I do. Cause if they were to know him, they would know this true. My God is a miracle maker. My God is a world changer. My God is a way maker. He'll come through for you. My God is a game changer. My God is a mighty warrior. My God is a miracle maker. He'll come through. It's true. He'll come through. He'll come through for you. He'll come through. He'll come through. It's true. He'll come through. Cause my God is Hold on, the road may get a little rougher The nights may go out, it'll look like it's over But when the end comes and the final curtain rises You will see the truth and about the lies And the world will be brand new And that is when you know That what I've been telling you is nothing by the good in the whole and the perfect true. My God is a miracle maker. My God is a world shaker. My God is a way maker. He'll come through for you. My God is a game changer. My God is a mighty warrior. My God is a miracle maker. He'll come through. It's true. He'll come through. He'll come through for you. He'll come through. He'll come through. It's true. He'll come through. Guys, my God, he goes. Now everyone is said We got the miracles assisted from Revelation and Genesis. You can see how awesome my God is. Our God patted the Red Sea. He turned the water to wine. He opened the eyes of the blind. He raised stone dead cold alive. Nothing is impossible for him. Our God is a miracle maker. Our God is a world shaker. Our God is a way maker. He'll come through for you. Our God is a game changer. Our God is a mighty warrior. Our God is a miracle maker. He'll come through. It's true. He'll come through. He'll come through for you. He'll come through. He'll come through. He'll come through Cause our God is a miracle maker Our God is a miracle maker Our God is a way maker He will come through for you and me He is going to deliver us from the enemy of our soul, Satan. Yes, the situation may look bleak. It may look impossible. And it may feel like you and I can't take another step or overcome these obstacles or get through the situations, the addictions, the shortcomings, and the vast number of enemies and everything we're facing. But hear what the word of the Lord is through Elisha. And Elisha answered, 
Do not fear. Hear that again. Do not fear. Fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, strike this people, I pray with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, according to the words of Elisha. There were chariots of fire all around. There was greater of the God's army than there was of the physical army. So even if we can't see them, God's army is with us. Those who are with us are more than those who are against them. Though the one who lives within us is greater than he that is in the world. Again, I say to you, you are not alone. The Bible says in Psalm 34 verse 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Psalm 91 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. The Israelites also faced a vast army after they left Egypt. Egypt for the Israelites represented slavery and bondage to the world, to heavy burdens, to false idols and vanities, to hopelessness and despair and darkness. And Egypt, they did not want to let go of their slaves, of those who used to do all their bidding and work. And so the Egyptians brought all their power to bear, all their forces, their horses, the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army. And today we as the children of God, we can call the illustration where we represent these Israelites and Satan and his devils and the demons and all of his pawns represent the forces of Egypt. When we repented and put our faith in Jesus Christ, we said goodbye. Goodbye to Egypt, to Satan and being a slave for him. We said goodbye to being his tool to work his devices, to being in bondage to sin and lust of the eyes and idols and greed and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. We said goodbye to hopelessness and despair and depression and lies and bitterness and anger and wrath and heavy burdens that weighed us down and weighed down our souls. We became free men in Jesus Christ. But Satan, like the Pharaoh of Egypt, he hates that freedom. He wants us back and he will bring all his forces, his lies, all of his methods and all the media to lure us, to force us, to drag us back into his kingdom, back into Egypt, the land of slavery. And when we face him and all his vast army, we can respond of two different ways. We can either take up our armor and take up our shield of faith and our sword of the spirit, which is our word of God, and put on our helmet of salvation and put on our breastplate of righteousness and our sh- shot our feet with the gospel of peace and put on the belt of truth and fight that battle in faith, knowing that God is on our side and we will win. Or we can let fear, despair, hopelessness overwhelm us. We can cry, I can't overcome the world. That's what the Israelites did. In spite of God showing them all his vast, amazing miracles and bringing them out of the land of Egypt and delivering them from the land of darkness, they said, oh, no, it's too much for us. Exodus 14 verse 10 says, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord and they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it had better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Does this phrase sound familiar? It should, because we just read how Elisha through God's prompting said, Do not fear. And now Moses, through the inspiration of God, is saying, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Let's read that again. 
the Lord will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Hold means to grasp, carry, or support with one's hands, to keep and grip. We are to hold on to our peace. We are to hold on to the knowledge and the absolute trust that we have in God, our Savior, that He is fighting for us, that He will deliver us, that He hears our every cry and He will answer us when we call. Matthew 21 verse 22 says, And all things, whatsoever thou shalt ask in prayer, believing, thou shalt receive. And 1 John 5, verses 14 to 15 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. God hears our cries, just like he heard the cries of the Israelites when they were facing the impossible. And you know what he did for them? He split the Red Sea and his people walked through on dry land. And when Pharaoh and his army pursued through to try to destroy them, the Lord troubled the host of the Egyptians. He took off their chariot wheels and the Egyptians couldn't get through. And they said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord told Moses to stretch out his hand over the sea that the waters would come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against the oncoming waters and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel, they walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashores. He mightily came through for his people. I don't know about you, but this makes me so excited to see what will God do in the face of the impossible? When the odds are stacked against us, when we don't see a way out because there is a vast sea in front of us and there is a horde, there is a gigantic army behind us. God is still with us and he is working on our behalf and we should stand still, hold on to our peace, trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and call upon his name, knowing he will deliver us from all our enemies. Again, I say, God will deliver us. He will help us overcome. Don't give up and run back to the land of Egypt to bondage and slavery. Don't say there's no way I will beat them, so I'll just join them. That's what Satan wants. He doesn't want you to overcome. He wants you just to succumb and give up. And he doesn't want you to be an overcomer. If he can't get you back because you refuse to go back to Egypt, then he will cripple you through fear. So you won't step forward in faith, trusting in God and his plans for you. Instead, you'll just stand there and and bury your talents like that unfaithful, slothful, wicked servant in the parable who refused to take his life and use it for God's glory because of his fear and because of his selfish ways. And we don't want to let the devil drag us back into Egypt or cripple us through fear, fear of the unknown, fear of not being able to pay bills, fear of having to conquer addictions, fear of shortcomings, fear of the media and everything they tell us and try to inundate with us every single day. Let me tell you, if you are getting fear from the politicians and from all these news articles, turn them off. Open the word of God. The news is not going to transform and change you and make you into a victor. You need to get into the word of God. Jesus Christ is the one who will cause you to rise victorious. He is your hope. I remember one time I was staying on my computer late at night and I knew I needed to get off and the Holy Spirit was prompting me, come on, get off. And I said, I'm looking for good news. And I heard the Jesus say in my heart, I am the good news. I'm like, oh, Yes, Lord, you are the good news. And so we need to stop and get our eyes off of the darkness, off of the armies, because that will cripple us in fear. That will make us feel like we can't overcome. Get your eyes on Jesus Christ. He says, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And we're seeing that right now in this day and age where people are overcome by fear, overcome by greed, 
overcome by lies because their eyes are on the world. Their eyes are on themselves. Their eyes are on the circumstances. And so they can't see clearly. They can't think clearly. They can't operate clearly. And they can't overcome anything because they are not keeping their eyes on Jesus Christ. And we need to be careful as children of God that we don't fall into the same pit because the world is extremely loud. And so we have to do our best to tune them out and tune into what Jesus says, that he is the good news, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we need to make sure that we don't end up like the Israelites who stood before the promised land and God had split the Red Sea for them. He had conquered the Egyptians. He brought them out of slavery. And still, after they returned from searching for the land of 40 days, they said, we can't win. We can't overcome. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, the 12 spies did, under the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh. And they brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, they told Moses and said, we came unto the land whither you sent us. And surely it does flow with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong and that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Listen to Caleb. He was speaking words of faith. He says to those who are full of unbelief, doubt, and fear, let us go. Go, let us move forward. Let us possess the land. Let us possess God's promises. Let us push forward and live a victorious life in Christ and go into his promised land for we are able to overcome. But the men that went up with them said, we are not able to go against the people for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report. They declared to all the people loudly, God is not able to help us. God can't do this for us. They were so full of unbelief that they could not aid, they could not enter the promised land. And this was a pattern in their lives. Over and over, whenever they faced hardships and difficulties, they would whine and complain. We don't have food. We're stuck out in the desert. We don't have water. We want meat to eat. Psalm 78 verses 20 to 22 says, Behold, God smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore, the Lord heard this and was wroth. He was angry. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. No matter what God did for his people, they wouldn't believe in him. They wouldn't trust that he would save them. In fact, the Israelites rebelled in their hearts and they turned back to Egypt, to their old ways. They decided, you know what? Forget about pushing through the obstacles and trusting God to help us overcome. Instead, we'll go back to Egypt. We'll go back to a land full of idols and the things our flesh lusts after. We will turn our backs on God in spite of everything he has already done for us and we will embrace the darkness. If you do this, if I do this, if we refuse to put our trust in God and believe that he will help us overcome, if we say, I don't need to overcome this temptation, it's too much to handle, I'll just give in and I'll go back to my old ways. I'll go ahead and go back to watching entertainment all the time and drinking and drugs and to looking at wrong images and drowning myself in entertainment and hanging out with the wrong crowd. I'll go back to being bitter and having physical relationships with whoever I want to while saying, God is a God of love. He's okay with it. I don't have to overcome these things because once saved, always saved. But Hebrews 3 verses 7 to 19 tells us otherwise. The Bible says, therefore, the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me. They tried me and they saw my works for 40 years. But I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they will not enter my rest. So beware, brethren, lest there be an any of you an evil heart of unbelief. Do you hear that? Unbelief is an evil 
heart. God, Jesus said, he says, how long must I suffer you? How long must I be with you because of their unbelief? And we are to exhort one another daily to encourage each other, lest any of us be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin says it's okay to do this. It's okay to look at that. It's okay to give in to the flesh, but it's deceiving you. It's not the truth. For we have become partakers of Christ if we behold the be- if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the very end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry for forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness, and to whom he swore that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see then that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Unbelief says, I can't overcome. Unbelief gives in to the flesh. Unbelief does not trust in God. And we can choose to depart from the living Lord. We can choose to walk away and stop trusting in God to help us overcome, just like the Israelites did. And God swore in his wrath to them, they shall not enter into my rest. They will not enter the promised land for us. Heaven is our promised land. And if we do not overcome through the power of Christ in us, we will not enter in. Revelation 21 verses 7 to 8 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. First Corinthians 6 verses 9 to 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived, neither fornicators or idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. We cannot go back to the land of Egypt and still make it into the promised land. It is one or the other. It is heaven or hell. It is overcome or succumb. We cannot embrace Satan and his evil deeds and make it through the pearly gates into heaven. And we need to see that there are two choices. We overcome, like I said, or we succumb. We make it to heaven or we go to hell. Now, if you die fighting, fighting against Satan, that is not succumbing. And you will be welcomed into heaven, even if you're fighting for a breakthrough and you're trusting in God. And even if even if you pass away in this lifetime, that makes you victorious in God's eyes. So thousands and thousands have died fighting the good fight of faith, maybe even millions. What I'm talking about is saying, let's not push through into having God's character and nature and his promises. Let's just go the easy route and head back into the devil's domain, into Egypt. Let me just use my time the way I want to and live for my flesh and uh, agree with the world that love is love and, and that the life in the womb is not real. And, and you know what? Because they'll get angry at me. I'll, I'll just go along with the world and, and God will be okay with that. But that way I don't have to fight the devil anymore. And, and I can have the goods of Egypt and the goods of heaven at the same time. But again, I say to you, you cannot embrace the world and its so-called wisdom, and you cannot embrace the works of the flesh and embrace God at the same time. You cannot serve both. You must choose. Luke 16 verse 13 says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. So you cannot succumb to the world and... uh, and gain the glories of heaven. You must overcome. Revelation, the final book in the Bible, says over and over that he that overcometh shall inherit life. Revelation 2, 20, Revelation 2 verse 7 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I, gre- will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 2, 10 to 11. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison, that you will be tried, and you will have tribulation. But be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. 
death. Revelation 2, 16 to 7. Repent, or else I will come unto you quickly, and I will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Revelations 2.26 Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Revelation 3 verses 4 to 5. If we don't want our names blotted out of the book of life, which is a possibility or revelation would have not said it, then we need to overcome and we must take up our cross daily, crucify our flesh and follow Jesus Christ. God has promised that if we seek him, that he will bring us through our Red Seas. He will bring us through our difficulties. He will help us enter into the promised land. But we must put on our faith in we must put our faith in Jesus Christ in order to do so. We must say, no matter what, I will not succumb to fear. I will not go back to Egypt. No matter the struggle or hardship, no matter what I'm facing, I will repent and get back up again when I make mistakes because no man is without sin. In fact, the Bible says that he says that he has no sin. He is a liar and there's no truth in him. And the Bible warns us to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. The world and all of its goods, it's going to pass away. Why are you trying to build up a kingdom here when you can only hang on to it for a few short years in the light of eternity? Our souls are eternal. And that's what we should be concerned with is where will we spend eternity? We are battling for our souls against Satan and all of his forces of evil. But we don't need to fear him because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Do not succumb, but instead overcome. And how? How do we overcome? First John 5 verses 3 to 5 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. John fifteen four verse to six says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me, Ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. We, In order to overcome, we must abide in Jesus. His words must abide in us. And when we hide God's word in our heart and we abide in Jesus, not just once a week, but every single day, we will bear fruit. And among that fruit that we know, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance is faith. And remember, First John 5 verse 4 just said, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our our faith, our faith will grow as we abide in God, as we have his word hidden in our heart, as we get to know Jesus and his characters and his nature and his promises. And we take what we learn in the word of God and we don't just hear it, but we do it and we cling to it. And that faith will help us overcome. And furthermore, Revelation 12, verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. So how did they overcome? They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. So we overcome the world through our faith in Jesus Christ, through his power, through his blood, and having the word hidden 
and in our hearts and by reminding ourselves of our testimonies of what God has already done and how he's already answered our prayers, how he's already brought us through in the past and how he's already delivered us from Satan. The Israelites, when they were up against their trials and struggles, they didn't believe in Jesus Christ. They didn't believe in God. They didn't remind themselves of their testimony, what God had already done for them. And they were afraid of dying. Right here we read, and they loved not their lives unto death. So the Israelites loved their own lives more than they loved God. And they did not trust him. So if we are to overcome, we must remind ourselves of what God has done done for us and we must love him more than our own lives jesus says fear not them which kill the body but rather but are not able to kill your soul but rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell the early church in acts they didn't fear being killed so they couldn't be manipulated or controlled by the world or by satan and all of his temptations and his fear tactics they knew to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord so when we face our trials and tribulations and difficulties do not cast away your confidence your firm trust in jesus christ which hath great recompense of reward which means there's a great reward waiting for you for you have need of patience that after ye have done the will of god ye might receive the promise an eternity in heaven with jesus christ where we never grow old or tired or weary and there's never another tear and there's never another heartache and there's never another death is the victory the hope that we cling to for one day and so don't throw away the recompense of your reward because you don't feel or don't think that you can overcome because the devil's lying to you don't let fear take you over and cripple you and cause you to bury your talents don't run back to bondage and the fake pleasures of egypt which will cost your eternal soul don't succumb again i say be an overcomer yes we will have trials and tribulations but in the light of eternity it is worth it jesus tells us that we are to be of good cheer for i have overcome the world god wants us to have peace to be cheerful in him even in the midst of everything that we're going through Jesus overcame the world. He overcame sin, death, and the grave. And through his grace and strength, we can overcome sin, death, and the grave. His word is quickened in us, and his word will cause us to rise up victorious as we take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and fight against all those lies being whispered by Satan. Jesus said to his disciples in the middle of the storm in that boat, he says, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? That is why you and I struggle with fear. Because because of our lack of faith in Jesus Christ and our faith will grow as we spend time with God as we hide his word in our heart as we talk to him as we lay our burdens down at his feet as we praise him a lot of times he says rejoice evermore pray without ceasing and in everything give thanks a lot of times I've forgotten that last one about giving thanks because you can feel like the whole world is coming in on you like it's caving in on you and there's nothing good sit there and start thanking God thanking him for your salvation that he has died for you thank him that you're alive thank him that you have another day thank him for every single good thing that he has done for you in the past and that he has promised for your future get your eyes off your circumstances and get your eyes on the overcomer in christ who will make you an overcomer and through his grace and strength, we will overcome. The Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my my son. Again, I say we are not doing this through our own strength. We are not doing this through our own effort. We are not orphans abandoned on the field. We are not victims. And we cannot succumb to Satan and his devices. And we cannot let fear cripple us like it did the Israelites and then try to rush back to the world and, and not put our faith in Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord. Believe in what he will do for you. Believe in his promises and cling tightly to him. Be an overcomer. So let's bow our prayer.
Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, I thank you for helping us to realize that we must overcome, but we're not going to do this through our own strength. We're going to do it through you, Jesus. We're going to call unto you and you will answer us and show us great and mighty things. For greater is he that is with us than he that is in the world. And no matter what we're up against, Lord, no matter what we go through, we have our eternal hope of being with you, Jesus. We ultimately, through you, are overcomers and we will not succumb. And if we fail, Lord, we will repent. You say seven times a righteous man may fall, but he gets back up again. So, Lord, help us to get back up again. Help us to be an overcomer. It's all okay. They say you will be fine if you live the way you want to. Believe in his name. That's all you need to do to inherit eternal life. But he who overcomes the world, it is he who will reign with Christ. He who overcomes the world will be dressed in white. To him who overcomes, a new name will be given to him who overcomes the world. Repent thy sins, hold fast to righteousness, keep all love his commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and strength to win heaven eternal life. For he who overcomes the world, it is he who will reign with Christ. He who overcomes the world will be dressed in white. To him who overcomes, a new name will be given to him who overcomes the world. He who does not overcome, his name will be blotted from the book of life. He who bears no fruit on a tree will be cast in the fire and burned for eternity. Yes, he who loves the world and all of its things, the love of the Father is not in him. Yes, he who loves his life will lose it. But he who overcomes the world, it is he who will reign with Christ. He who overcomes the world will be dressed in white. To him who overcomes, a new name will be given to him who overcomes the world. To him.